Okay, well, welcome everybody. I think you see a familiar face on here. And if you don't know Pam Popper, she is the president and founder of the Wellness Forum Health. And it's a company that offers educational programs to consumers and providers that facilitate informed decision making, making diet and lifestyle inter intervention and improve long term health outcomes. She is also the founder of Make Americans Free Again, which has short term goals to free Americans from government tyranny long-term goals to rebuild the country after the devastation of COVID-19 and design and launch a superior medical system. Well, thank you, Pam. I know you've been super busy and doing a million interviews um, among trying to save the world. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time. Um, this is a crazy, crazy time. And um, just, just to start out in Massachusetts, where I'm from, um, couple of things, issues. You know, we have a new bill that was introduced to take away religious exemptions. Mm -hmm. um, another one that they're going to take away, um, or all medical exemptions will actually go through the Board of Health. And then it's in same thing with religious exemptions. Um, mm -hmm. Lexington, Massachusetts, forcing double masks on kids. Um, my town where I live, they have threatened the kids playing basketball, not wearing masks is going to actually shut down um, the playground. So I think people want to know, you know, how do we get out of this mess? I mean, there's mm -hmm. not really one solution. Um, but what are some of the positive things? What I want for the people to today is maybe five bullet points that the average person can take action on. How can we take action to move forward out of this medical tyranny? Okay, well, I actually think there's only one thing to do, and it's the thing that hasn't been done before. And I think it's it's very important to look at what has happened because the what's happening now uh, around the country um, is some very productive stuff. But then we have a lot of people, and they're very well meaning, but they are doing things that have been tried for 40 years and never worked before. Okay, so. And I think that there are a couple of bad things about that. Number one, you don't get freed from tyranny. And the second thing is people are so worn out. And I'm sure you've sensed this in your community where it's like, you can see it on people's faces. And, um, and so we need to start having people direct their energies into things where we can win and we can see change, right? So I think the first thing is that, um, let's look at the things that don't work. Protests don't work. Uh, I mean, it, they're great places to meet people. It's a social event, but it doesn't change anything. Declarations, petitions, they don't work, all right? Writing to your elected officials, they couldn't care less what you or me or any of us think, but they've demonstrated that again and again, right? Um, uh, you know, making appointments, talking to these people, submitting scientific you know, information. See, the problem is you and I are reasonable people, and we think they're going to be reasonable, right? <laughs> and they just aren't. Yeah. So the only way that I know to solve this problem is to do the thing that's never been done before. And that is to, first of all, gather up enough people uh, that we can threaten these people with not getting reelected. We actually have like numbers in the, in the district where you can sit down with your representative and say, you're gonna do what I say or else. But the other thing is we have to file lawsuits. This is a litigation issue. And a lot of the lawsuits that have been filed have been constitutional lawsuits. And I agree with them in principle. I mean, our rights are being violated. Like who would disagree with that, right? But the problem is that the government then relies on the emergency declaration and then the judges rule in their favor. So we're filing lawsuits saying there is no emergency. There was no emergency. Furthermore, officials know it and they're committing fraud. And because this terrifies them, and we filed in several states and against the federal government, we see things immediately start to shift as soon as we file. So for example, we didn't have a second shutdown in Ohio. We're the only affected state that didn't do round two. And the reason was because we filed before that happened. So I think that's what we have to do. And then I think the other thing that I would say, I would give a second thing that I think is really important. And I've been talking about this more, is that we have got to stop complying. All right. And so what I mean by that is that, um, you know, this whole business of if we don't have a beach vacation this summer, we're going to die. So we'll mask up and get on the plane and stand in the circles. Listen, you're not going to die if you don't have a beach vacation. And before you send your kid to these god awful places we used to call universities to sit in his dorm, dorm room and you know, take a year off. Because right. what, what happens, and I think this is a really important thing to stress, 
is how you spend your money and where you show up speaks volumes about what you think is okay. So if I spend $30,000 to send my kid to a school where they abuse him and test him and he's terrified half to death and he's not learning anything. And by the way, they're not learning anything. And what we're talking about people who are gonna be chronically unemployable by any reasonable employer because the professors tell me I have to pass them on, right? So, so you're saying this is okay with me. It's so okay with me that I'm delivering my child to you to do it. I'm gonna pay for it. Well, well, how do you expect this problem to get solved with a message like that coming from millions of people every day? So, so I think those are the two things, the big wake up calls. We've got to start filing the right kinds of lawsuits and stop messing around with a lot of this other stuff. And we've got to stop supporting the nonsense. That's what I think. Well, how can you trust the government if, they're, if they are the people you know, behind the lawsuits? Well, they're not the people you? behind the lawsuits. We're the people behind the lawsuits. Well, and the entire, well, it the has whole to go system, through the system. Right. The whole court system isn't corrupt. There are corrupt right. judges, but the whole court system isn't corrupt. And if we file in every state, we only need one judge to give us discovery. Right. Because then it's all over with. Once we get it, and some of this is coming out already. I mean, Tom Fitton at um, uh, Judicial Watch has, have, has achieved uh, getting a document dump from Mr. Fauci's emails, which was very revealing. We got a lot of great information from that. And now he's got all, all kinds of videos and um, internal emails from CNN to see how complicit they were in a lot of what went on. So uh, we're looking for a much bigger document dump, but my point is that if we file in all 49 affected states or 48 affected states, we only need one judge in one state to give us discovery, and then this is all over with, right? So um, I know that there are problems with the courts, but there aren't problems with all the courts and all the judges, and we just might need one. And, and the more you file, the closer right, you right. get to being lucky. You know, some, sometimes you can get where you wanna go by luck just by making numbers work for you, right? Right. We hope there's one sane person in this insane system. Well, and there are, by the way, <laughs> there are because there have already been some rulings made that that have been favorable. It isn't all bad news, but but it's mostly bad news, mainly because kind of what the way I feel like when I get up in the morning is all around America, I'm trying to herd cats. If you've right. ever tried to herd cat, I have one cat, I can't herd him. So we're trying to herd yeah. cats into That's productive, uh, you know, oh, you, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. How old is that cat? Oh, we just got him about a month ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, my, mine may come wandering in too because I'm talking to you from my house. But, um, but anyway, it's, it's herding cats into stop doing this that doesn't work and please come over here because we've already made some of this work. And that's not an easy thing to do, mainly because the stress levels that people are experiencing, as you know, you're in the healthcare business, it's, right. it's off the charts, right? And that makes it hard to even listen to people. And I get that. Yeah, yeah, it's hard because, you know, there are protests going around and people will ask me to go and I don't see the use in that. Mm -hmm. you know, what, what comes out of that. So I, I haven't gone to many, um, but there is one that I'm tr thinking of, I should go to, to get rid of the mask mandate. Um, mm -hmm. Because the well, town administrator, work, but you might meet people to get involved in something productive. Right, you know? right, and, right. Or, you know, yeah. getting local too might help like the, the, the school committee, or the town administrator, the city councilman talking to them, because the town administrator is the one that put out that he's threatening to shut down the playground. Yeah. So if we, you know, email him letters that this is tyrannical, you don't have any, uh, you know, you shouldn't. Well, people have been doing that for a year. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. So, so I think that, you know, one of the things that we're finding out and, and, and this started last summer and we just have to realize it. The, the worst thing in the world is not what I'm going to tell you. It's ignoring what I'm going to tell you, okay? What we found out is that our elected officials have no sense of obligation to the citizens, and they do not care what the citizens think. What they care about is being in office. It's the only thing we can threaten them with is to take them out of office. And at this point in time, we do not have the capability of doing that because nobody has ever organized a database the size of which we're, we're organizing that can be sorted by legislative district. So, or, or commit, you know, county commissioner, whoever it is that you're going after. Now that looks like my house, right? 
<laughs> but um, but but we that's the only thing that they care about is being elected. And um, and the other thing too is a lot of this local stuff that goes on, mayor and commissioner, and even kind of state legislatures. I've learned a lot about this. What they're really doing is parking themselves there, hoping to go on to something bigger. They want to be the attorney general. They want to run for uh, Congress or Senate, right. or they want to get some plum position. We give out a lot of them here in Ohio, and I think they do everywhere. Be a good girl or a good boy when you're in the uh, Ohio Senate or the Ohio House of Representatives, and then you could get a position on the liquor board, and you get eighty thousand dollars a year, and you get three trips to Columbus in a nice hotel, and you know. So, but the key is you can't make anybody mad, or you won't get the juicy stuff, right? So they sit there and they do nothing. I mean, I was absolutely disgusted last year mm -hmm. when I watched the, the our legislators get on TV and they weep and cry about you know how bad things are in their district and the kids are committing suicide and all the stuff that we know about and then to go to their office and do nothing, right? So if somebody told me right now to write to one of my elected officials or to call them or to go visit them, here is what I would do. I would take off my clothes and put on my jammies. I would sit on the couch with a nice glass of wine. I would read magazines and eat chocolate during the time allocated for that because at least at the end of that, I would have a nice break from work and I would be <laughs> mentally healthier because that would be a better investment of my time than spending any time talking to them. I have nothing to say to them. And, and I'm, a, I'm a pretty persuasive, articulate person. And I can't think of anything that I could say to any of them that would make them do anything different than what they're doing right now. So what you have to say is that's an unfortunate thing and we have allowed it to happen. All right, we've all allowed it to happen. We keep electing these nitwits because of whatever the party they belong to or however else they get there. And so we're just gonna have to work around them and then we're gonna have to get rid of them. And in getting rid of some of them, the clear message will get sent to the ones that remain. You better do what these people say or you're gonna be out of here too. That's the language they understand. And until we have those kinds of discussions with them, and we can't do it until our database is filled with millions of names, they're going to keep doing what they're doing and we're going to keep paying the price for it. Okay, well, let's talk about um, Make Americans Free again. And why is it important to come in community locally once a week? Yeah, so um, I started my first, we call them Thursday groups. They can meet on Wednesday, by the way. That just happened right, right. to be the way mine started. But, but um, one of the things I recognized right away is that um, these people were brilliant who planned this because they kept people apart from each other and people need to be with right. each other, you know? Um, and so some of us have had the privilege of not having total disconnection from humans, but a lot of these people have. And I noticed that, that people were, were coming earlier and earlier to the meeting, staying later and later and later because they just wanted to be around humans, you know? So, so I think the congregating part of it is very powerful. Um, many people, I'm sure you've heard this a lot. They'll say, I'm the only person in my group who thinks like this. Like my mother's mad right, at me, yeah. my brother's mad at me. So, so now they're in a group of like-minded people. They don't feel so crazy. We got our people involved in small business rescue, which made them feel productive. You know, the helpless feeling like there's nothing I can do. I think that is so debilitating. So when we, when we go save a business and we've actually gone places and bought everything that wasn't nailed to the floor or the wall so that a person could bring their rent up to date, you know, that kind of thing. People say, you know, I accomplished something today. I feel like I'm getting back at them to a certain extent. That's a right. great feeling, right? And then we raise money to file the lawsuits and uh, the fundraisers become the social life. The social life in Ohio, and we're pretty established here because we are the first place, is our fundraisers. And um, one of the things that we've done with our people is we always encourage our new folks, go through your 2019 calendar, look at all the things that you used to do that you're not doing now, like I used to buy tickets to the Symphony's Russian Festival every year and all this. I added it all up and then I said, okay, I'm gonna spend this money on small business rescue and fundraisers. And then uh, I have a life and um, we move things forward, right? And that's where people find the money for it. And, um, and so at the end of the day, we're keeping our people sane. We're saving our businesses. This is real grassroots. I'm, I'm helping the person a mile from me do something, right? And, and um, we're, we're fighting back with intelligent, well thought out lawsuits with top flight legal, legal teams. And, uh, and that's how we're gonna win. And I think um, I wanna talk a little bit about social media, if you don't mind, because I, I, I really have uh, had a lot of time to think about this. 
you know, people say, well, you can't post anything on social media and they censor and all that. So I have to be real careful what I say too. But you know, that the criminals have actually made us do something we need to do, which is to stop thinking that if I post something on uh, Facebook, that it's communication. It's not. Communication is me talking to you right now. Communication is me calling a friend and saying, you want to come this Thursday. It's forcing us to get back into the type of communication between humans that is meaningful. So to heck with Facebook, I don't care about it anymore. You know, when they started censoring, I had that same sinking feeling as everybody else, you know? And then I started realizing, oh my gosh, thank God they censored because look what it's making us do. And you know what the best part of all of this is? is all over the United States, these groups are meeting and they're saving their communities and all this is going on. And our crazy rulers are too stupid to realize that that's what's going on. They actually think that they've got some things under control. Little do they know. <laughs> that's kind of fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so we started um, Massachusetts, Make Massachusetts Free again um, in here. I have a group where I'm on my third week. And mm -hmm. it, what is really interesting, you know, what's come out of this is that I would never have done this before. It just mm -hmm. strangers are showing up at my house. Yeah. Um, all for for just to just to communicate and and I feel so sad but happy because every person that shows up feels like they're the only one who mm -hmm. ever felt this way. Right. Um, but you know, now it's 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 connecting to more people because every time they come, it's all right, your job is to bring someone else. Your job mm -hmm. is to bring someone else. So right. it's been really interesting. You know, I would never have done this before in my previous life, open my home up to strangers mm -hmm. once a week. <laughs> right, right. And, and it's, it is therapeutic. And I'll tell you something else about it too, is that um, I've, I've, I've gotten so many emails from people who have had devastating losses, like people who won't speak to them anymore and all that. And um, so we all need new friends. I mean, that's happened to me. Um, you know, I right. call them tribes, you know, your little tribes and yeah. pods of people that have just been completely decimated by this. And, and so we all have to make new friends and this is where we're making our new friends. And the interesting thing about the new friends, and I had, I had this epiphany one day, I was feeling kind of, you know, you can't help but feel sorry for yourself once in a while when stuff <laughs> happens. And I was kind of feeling this way about a couple of severed connections. And I thought, you know, what's interesting is here's a relationship, um, a business relationship, for example, somebody I've been connected to for 10 years. And you think that 10 years is a lot of time, shared history, common objectives, it should be a great deep relationship, but it wasn't. All I had to do was take a different stand on something than that person. They excommunicate them, they excommunicate me from their life. That's not a good relationship. So the relationship that I started with somebody else four months ago, that's based on shared common goals, that this person is, you know, likes to have dialogue and all that kind of stuff. That new relationship actually has more depth to it in many ways than the ones that are severed. And I, I have a new view of relationships and I've just decided a few months ago, I just don't wanna be around people where I have to watch what I say. God forbid somebody find out I'm a Republican. God forbid somebody find out I believe in God. I mean, there are some people that that's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just don't want to, that's not a relationship, that's tap dancing. And I'm 64 years old, I'm finished tap dancing. I don't wanna do that anymore. So I think that the new relationships that people are making at our meetings, like the one that you're having, the one that I'm having, this is another way in which we're helping our people in very extraordinary and important ways. Yep, and I had the same thing. I mean, I haven't talked to, I have three sisters and one is gonna get the shot. She has two master's degrees and she's refusing to talk to me, but she's mm -hmm. the one that would go to the store and pick up some presents for my kids but wouldn't come in my house to drop them off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, there, there's been, there's been no, no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, no Easter with my whole mm -hmm. entire family. I mean, mm -hmm. and it's just, we're so divided and broken and it's, it's awful. Yeah, yeah. it, is. it uh, is. But, you know, you think about, Maybe it was broken before already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I think I think that it was. And I think that's the that's what I what I'm saying is that, you know, it's very easy to think that some things are important that aren't. I think there's been a great shift in a lot of our minds, those of us who are thinking, 
you know, right. it, it, it all, you can divide the population in two to a certain extent. You've got people who just bought all of this and in order to buy it, they had to stop any kind of critical thinking at all. And, and I think they probably stopped critical thinking a long time ago, which is why I was tap dancing, which is, you know, that, that just, I don't want to do it anymore. Then you have people like us who have been thinking about all of this during this period of time and really coming to a lot of important realizations. And, um, uh, you know, if you've watched my YouTube videos, I've been pretty transparent about a lot of things that have happened in my life. And so uh, I've, I've had severed family relationships for uh, probably, what, 50 of my 64 years on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not new to me. It was never comfortable. I don't like it. But I've realized one thing I can share with other people is the cost of maintaining a family relationship that's based on, I can't upset you. Right. You, you can't, you, it never works. I tried it. You know, it, there's a, there's a thing that, um, and, and I think it happens to everybody who has these kinds of severed relationships. You keep thinking that, okay, I'm going to try this again. And this time I, I know right. how to not upset the apple cart and the whole nine yards. And then sooner or later, you upset the apple cart because it's so unreasonable what the other person is asking you to do that you're going to upset the apple cart, right? So, so you've got to pretend like all this is fine. The virus is only going to attack you at the doorway of the restaurant, right. not when you're sitting down. And the virus will know if there's two families or three families sitting at the table. And the, that vaccine that doesn't stop infection or spread, we all really need to get it. And there's just only so much of I can control not saying something about it, right? And so, so, you're, so we just have to, at some point in time, say, look, these people will have to come around at some point in time as this all unravels, or this, these, these severed relationships might be permanent. And I think people need a lot of support, community support, to go through the process of dealing with that. I dealt with it years ago. I know what it's like. I know how screwed up I was for a long time over it. So it's back again to that Thursday congregating, that weekly congregating that gives people some place to go and feel better for a while. Right. Um, you know, and on that note, I know you did a video the other day. Has, there's a lot of people trying to save people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, don't get the shot. You know, um, the cognitive dissonance. I mean, mm -hmm. There's a point you get to that I've come to that I can't save anybody anymore. I'm not right. going to try to save anybody anymore. Um, if they're going to go ahead and take an untested, unapproved, 100% experimental pharmaceutical product, that's in their hands. You know, mm -hmm. if they haven't done their research by now, and we're months and months into this emergency use authorization, then that's on them. And right. I and I've gotten to the point where I'm still sympathetic, but um, I got to let it go because I, mm -hmm. I'm not going to save those people. So giving advice to those people who are racking their brains saying, oh, my God, I got to save my mother. I got to save my best friends, you know. Yeah. Just some quick advice for them. And it's like saving somebody. You know, have you ever had a friend who's in an abusive relationship or mm -hmm. somebody who's their husband is cheating on them and you're trying to get them out and it, they just don't believe you? Right. Well, and I think you're using really good analogies. And I think the video you're referring to is the one that I titled, none, it's none of my business, you know, and, and I've watched, uh, I mean, I really have sort of learned just because I don't want to be alienated from society ent entirely, that I just don't want to say much to people like I, I've watched people marry people I thought were totally inappropriate. And lo and behold, 15 years later, they're getting divorced. But, <laughs> but really trying to do an intervention there, you right. never, it never comes mm -hmm. out well at all. You watch people getting ready to make an investment that's disastrous, but you can't. So I think that really, if we look back on our lives, we're not really very good at influencing other people unless, and this right. is an important caveat, unless they ask. Okay. Right. So the, you know, I'm in the healthcare business. People ask me my opinion about this. Okay, they tend to listen. They don't always necessarily do what I, uh, what I might do, but the point is that they're asking for input. I think it is always disastrous when a person who hasn't asked for your input <laughs> <laughs> right, and you start giving it, and it doesn't matter if it's boyfriends, girlfriends, houses, cars, jobs, whatever. You know, you're just gonna, <laughs> you're gonna wish that you didn't do it afterwards, and and so I think you just leave it alone, and uh, and I've left a lot of those people alone. Um, 
I don't put myself in situations where I have to tap dance around the, are you going to get the vaccine kind of thing. And, and I also tell people, conversely, if somebody asks about that, you know, you can just say, um, I've chosen not to. Well, 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 I don't really think we need to discuss it. It, it just put an end to it. You, it. We have a lot more control over this kind of thing than we sometimes realize, you know. Right, right. Um, you know, the one thing I've really been disappointed over because I, I took the plant-based medicine certificate from the TCON Institute. So I follow Dr. Bernard and um, the Physicians for Responsible Medicine. They have YouTube channel and they started talking about the benefits of the COVID vaccine in their introduction. Mm -hmm. And I was just so disappointed because I thought, aren't they about health? And they they do so much investigative work about you know plant based medicine and how dairy is not good for you and, and they even go into the propaganda of the, of the dairy business, but they're not going to go through the propaganda of the vaccine business and they're promoting the COVID shots. Mm -hmm. So well, I was just so dis just so disappointed, almost like I there's there's they have such good guests and they have such good information, but I'm just so. It's, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, well, that's happened with a lot of the plant-based community. Yeah, and I've been excommunicated from them for the most part for speaking out. And, um, and by the way, I kind of saw with many of them, I think PCRM was sort of the last one to fall, in my opinion. Um, but they were warned. I had conversation with some of them uh, before mm -hmm. this all started, actually, because the, the PCRM had a... Um, a thing about uh, vaccines being tested on animals was not a good idea. And they had a website built. And I, oh, uh, wow. this was back when I was on the president's board and I actually brought it up with some of the staff. I said, this, this needs to come down. You guys need to be out of this. You don't know enough about it. It's gonna sooner or later create a problem. And um, uh, nobody wanted to listen to it then. And so um, it, it was bothersome. It was a website that you had, you didn't easily find but I would get an email about it every once in a while. And now what's happened is that, um, you know, the, the, I, I don't need to name names, but it isn't just them. They're all, they're all gonna crash and burn over this vaccine issue. And, and, the, and the problem is this has been coming for a long time. Um, many of these people have been making statements that are simply not scientifically defensible for a very long time. But for the record, T. Colin Campbell is not one of them. Oh, okay? good, okay. I'm talking, good. About, I'm talking about some of the many other well-knowns. And, um, and so, I mean, salt's going to kill you. And if you have birthday cake, you don't, you're lacking moral character and a cup of coffee and means you don't care about your health. I mean, just uh, nonsense, absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. It is absolute nonsense. All right. So, so this has been going on for a long time. This is sort of the death knell. I, I mean, now, now they've just demonstrated to the world, we have no interest in science at all. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be harmful. And, and it gives me no pleasure to say that. I, I wish I wasn't right about this. Right. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be devastating at some point in time. And, and particularly in this situation, because um, some of the, you know, telling people coffee is going to kill you is a stupid and false comment. But it doesn't quite, it, it doesn't kill, that type of advice doesn't actually cause harm to people. The recommendation of this vaccine is extraordinarily harmful. And I want to point out something about that. AstraZeneca's vaccine has been completely removed in Denmark. They're not using it anymore. Okay. Johnson & Johnson's is, is under suspension in, a, in the United States. And the Moderna vaccine there's a doctor in British Columbia who's putting his medical license on the line. It'll be in my newsletter next Monday um, because he's, he has had no, nobody in his area of British Columbia has required treatment for COVID. And he's had two deaths out of the first 900 shots he's given and oh tons of injuries, gosh. all right? So, and that's AstraZeneca. So we're talking, or um, uh, Moderna rather. So we're talking about three out of the four my vaccine right. makers are all convicted criminals, just so you know, mm -hmm. convicted criminals. I've written about this in my newsletter. And, um, and three out of the four have already had their products taken off the, uh, uh, have some kind of a problem with their products. So at the end of the day, I don't know how these people are going to look into the YouTube camera and say, well, I, will they admit that they're wrong? Because the, their advice is inevitably in, in going to disable and kill people.
Right. And uh, I'm not going to have that on my hands. You're not going to have that on your hands. But some of these people are. And I don't know how the chips are all going to fall. Well, a lot of rearranging going on. There is a great reset happening. It's not the one that the criminals envisioned, but there's a great reset happening all around. And a lot of things are just coming to light on so many levels that have been sort of simmering under the surface for a long time. Right. You know, I really feel like it begins with um, the 1986 Act. Um, I know it took years of us years and years to get here, but I think that the system needs to fall, mm -hmm. fall and so that we can rebuild it. Mm -hmm. And they just need to admit at some point that they're wrong, that we were right. wrong, so that we can right. move on, this country can move on. Well, they're not going to admit they're wrong. We're going to have to just basically prove them wrong in court. And that, that's the problem with healthcare in general, is that people build entire careers in healthcare, research, medicine, on false premises. I mean, this, right. this whole thing that's happening right now is kind of an interesting backstory, I'll tell you. I'm teaching a course on HIV AIDS right now. And, um, and basically the story of HIV AIDS is it was a great dress rehearsal for this. HIV doesn't cause AIDS. They killed AIDS patients based on that false theory. And um, the guy who invented that theory here in the United States is um, he's, been, he's been found guilty of scientific misconduct and nothing bad happens to him, you know? So as long as we're gonna have criminals in charge of our healthcare system, our research institutions, and, and, um, and we're gonna let people make stuff up and kill people. Mr. Fauci killed a lot of people during those, uh, the 1980s right. and 90s with his stupid theory that had no basis in fact. And, um, and so at some point in time, maybe this just had to become big enough and awful enough for, and enough people had to die and get hurt that uh, everybody wakes up or more people wake up. And I kind of suspect that that's what's going on right now. Right, kind of like, remember the thalidomide? Yes. That drug exactly. thalidomide when the babies came out yeah. without limbs and then they finally stopped it. But now they give a cousin of that drug for multiple myeloma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable, take part right? in that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just leave with some positive things. Um, yeah. Let me tell you some positive things. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and there is a lot of positive to talk about, believe it or not. So the, the first thing is, and I've said this for a long time, this has not all going to gone according to plan for the criminals. Right. right. And the, the first thing that happened is not everybody went along with it. And this, this creates a lot of inconvenient data. Like they can, they can try to spin Sweden and South Dakota all they want, but the bottom line is there's no explanation for it, right? That makes any sense. And then if I had been a consultant to these people, which I never would have done, but I would have told them, you know what, you guys, you don't have a very good exit plan. So the exit plan, what's happening is it's all over the place. So Texas and Mississippi just say, we're done. We're not doing this anymore. And within a week, Texas has almost 40,000 people in a stadium and nobody's wearing a mask. And, and somebody asked uh, Fauci, you know, the, all these thousands of people gathering. And, and um, do you remember the pathological liar on Saturday Night Live, John Levitt? And he would say, yeah, my girlfriend, she's Morgan Fairchild. That's the ticket. It's kind of like watching Fauci tap dance around trying to explain things that are unexplainable, <laughs> right? The, the cases are going down. The hospitalization's going down in Texas. Where is everything awful? Uh, California, you know, so, <laughs> so he's tap dancing around. So this is really bad. And then Ron DeSantis, you know, says we're going to free Florida. And then, um, you know, the, the declaration, we're going to have vaccine passports. Well, states are right. passing laws saying right. you can't do that. So, so the 10th Amendment in the United States is alive and well, and the states are fighting back and passing laws. And so it makes these people in Washington almost look like caricatures. You know, they're, they're saying, well, we're going right. to demand this and we're going to demand that. And people are going, yeah, no, no we're not going to do that. You know, so, so I think that this is um, very encouraging. The American spirit is alive and well on so many levels. And so I think what we are gonna, what we just have to buckle down and realize is between now and the end, we have a lot of mess, okay? But the end will come and we're gonna win. And we'll look back on these days and it's one of the most remarkable things in history. It we're is. getting to live it right now. And so let's just buckle up, get ready for the battle, join together because we're Americans. We can, we got this people, we can do it. Right, right, right. And I heard, um, I listened to Chris Ann Hall. She's actually, I'm having her come. I organized her to come. I don't know if you know her. 
um, next Thursday. She is uh, she goes around and teaches how to get our, country, our, our states back. She's a constitutional lawyer, and that's all she does. Um, but wait, what did you just say again? <laughs> Repeat what you just said again. I, which, which one? Oh, all right, we'll move it on. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I didn't say anything in response. No, no. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Oh, my, my, no, 11, no. my 11 year old standing here trying to get my. Oh. Well, that's right. That's what, have you noticed how everybody, this is, this has been a good thing about COVID too, something positive we can say. There would have been a time when I, if I was on a radio show or a TV show or whatever, or a video like this and, and my cat me out or whatever, people would have gotten all prickly. And now people go, oh, that Hello. must be Schroeder. Everybody knows my cat, you know? And, uh, and so there's a, there's a relaxed nature about a lot of the interchanges <laughs> that I think is a lot more fun than when things used to be so formal, right? <laughs> right, right, right. And I guess there's the cat still sleeping there. There he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least they're cuddly they're so cuddly oh, they um, so, are. so the new hampshire governor um he said today he's going to end the mask mandate very very soon mm -hmm. so i never know what's behind that or why they do it i don't think it's for the good of the people i don't know if he's being threatened or whatever but anyways that's one good thing because yeah. I'm right on the border, New Hampshire. I'll do all my shopping in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're um, they're scrambling around. They know they're in trouble. I mean, right. the the I can't. If I were, I, I mean, I can only think about if I were the governor of Ohio right now, um, who's already had to he's already had to make enormous concessions because of what we've done already here. I'd be worried. And one of the reasons that they're all worried too is they have personal liability. When we prove the fraud. Yeah. They go after their personal assets. And most of these governors are very rich. And so that will go a long way in making people whole who they ruined. Looking forward right. to those days, right? You know, I didn't, I, I listened to one of your videos. I didn't realize how rich they were. Uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't know they were worth millions, but oh. millions, 10 million. Yeah. And, you know? and, and have you ever wondered, like, how does a guy like Mike DeWine in Ohio accumulate $70 million while he's in public service for 50 years, right? Because that's what people say he's worth. I mean, I don't know, but that's what everybody says. So how do you do that? I want that job. I want that public service job where I get 70 million, right? right? I would sign up. You would too, right? I don't know how you do it, but they have done, they've many of them done that, right? I guess the criteria is you don't have to care about anybody or anything. Except <laughs> Then you can get 70 yeah. million. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, this has been a great, great conversation. Thank Pam, you. And thank you so much for taking the time and um, right. thank you for everything you do. I mean, if you weren't doing what, you, what you're doing, if you didn't stand up and say, we, we need to do this, we need to come together. I, mean, I watched your videos from day one when you said, well, this is what we're going to do. But from day one, the website, now I have the MAFA groups in my um, home. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. We need someone to stand up and um, be the mentor for all of us. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.